In this tutorial we're going to look at how we can incorporate files created in Vectrix Photo VCarve software into our design. So here we can see uh, a fairly conventional set of 2D toolpaths or 2.5D toolpaths creating the decorations around the edge and the border of our picture frame or plaque. And in the middle here we have two of the rather specialist toolpaths created with the Photo VCarve software. If I go to the 2D view here we can see that the uh, Photo VCAF toolpaths also have associated with them a nice 2D preview that we can use to manipulate them uh, and move them around as part of our design. Okay, so we're going to look now at how this file was created. Okay, so the starting point for this demonstration then is a conventional 2.5D decorative plaque onto which we're going to put the photographs. So I'm just going to open that file, it's called Portrait Frame, and here you can see we've got the 2D vectors that define the edge of the plaque, plus some decorative artwork on the sides and, and some text. Uh, so I'm going to go across and just look at the toolpaths we've created for using these vectors. So if I use the switch to toolpath tab, we go across and focus on the toolpaths for a second. And also I'm going to switch to the 3D view so that we can see the toolpaths in situ. So here's our sort of blank material block, and I'm going to turn on now the decoration and text, which is a V-bit carving toolpath. And then we've got the OG border, which is a sort of cutout uh, using a form tool, so that's going to shape the edge to give us a decorative edge to the plaque, and finally just the simple cutout which actually removes the plaque from the back material, background material. Okay, so I'm going to simulate these, so we'll, we'll um, just preview all of those toolpaths very quickly, and that gives us our material block uh, with the plaque cut out from the middle. If we double click anywhere on, on material that we don't want in the simulation, it will be removed, so you can remove the waste material and get a better feel for what this plaque will look like. OK, so that's the basic background, and we're going to put our photo VCarve images in the centre here. So the final thing I want to show you before we move across to photo VCarve is just to think a little bit about the dimensions here. So I'm going to close down the preview, and I'm going to use the switch back to the drawing tab for a second, and we're going to go to the 2D view here, uh, uh, where I can see the measurements of our plaque, which you can see is it's around about 20 inches uh, wide, and if I just draw a rectangle in the middle here, uh, I can read from the bottom here what the width of my central area is, and it's going to be about 10 and a half uh, inches. Okay, so I need to think about each of my images being around about 5 inches in width. Uh, that's really the only thing I need to worry about at this stage. Um, so what we're going to do now is switch over to Photo VCarve to make the actual central photographs. Okay, so the starting point for our photo VCarve toolpath is a an image. So I'm going to load in uh, this picture first of the baby boy. Uh, now we've done a little bit of processing of this image first. So this is a photograph that's come straight off a digital camera or something. And it would normally have had the background uh, which we're not interested in for the purposes of our portrait. So before bringing it into photo VCarve, it, we've first taken it into a, um, a paint package. Any digital paint package will do really. Uh, it's a very simple process then to paint using the painting tools in the package uh, a block of colour as long as we use one colour, in this case yellow, we can remove anything we like by painting yellow over the areas we're not interested in. And now when we come into Photo VCarve, there's an option here to make colour transparent. And I can select that option, and as I go over the picture here, I get a little dropper tool, and I can click any colour on here that we are going to effectively ignore. We're going to make it uh, so that the v Photo VCarve software it treats it as a transparent colour and will not include it in, in the toolpath. So when I click anywhere on the yellow, all of the yellow area now becomes transparent okay and we're only going to be interested in the photograph the next thing we want to do is set the material size now it's important now that we understand where this final toolpath is going to go and we in our plaque we wanted to go in a small area in the middle of our uh, plaque so it's important that we set the size here the physical size of the final uh, toolpath. So in our case we're going to set it to be 6 inches wide. The whole area in the middle of our plaque is about 12 inches and we want this uh, photograph to form half of that. So we want to set 6 in inches in width here. The height is set automatically according to the aspect ratio of the picture but you can see here it's just over 5 and 3 quarters there. Uh, the origin of where the toolpath uh, will start is going to be in the bottom left hand corner here. 
Um, the material thickness is not massively important to us because we're just going to be engraving uh, a little bit of V-bit engraving in the surface so the thickness is not crucial but it's good to keep it consistent so I've just set it here to an eighth of an inch uh, and it is important that we set the Z0 to be the top of the block uh, because we're going to engrave into the top surface of our plaque and that's it I can just apply that and it now enables the next option here which is to set the cutting parameters I'm going to use the default tool um, but crucially you do need a V-bit tool here which has got a reasonable uh, comes to a very fine point and has a reasonable uh, wall angle here uh, to get a good effect but you can experiment with this the 60 degree is uh, to a fine point is, is very good so I've selected that I just need to say how far are we prepared for the tool to go in and I've set here four thousandths of an inch it just really needs to scratch the surface it's going to dip in and out according to the photograph and then we can set the line spacing so this is the distance between the stripes of our photo v-carve effect I'm just going to leave that at the default setting of 100 and the line angle of 30 is fine um, so that's great I can uh, I can at this point adjust aspects of the image so that we can we can change the relative um, depth that it will cut the light and dark areas but essentially I'm going to keep it at mostly the defaults here and click calculate okay so we can see now immediately the photo v carve effect so it's a series of stripes where the tool just dips in and out according to how dark that part of the image is and it produces this nice effect when we cut it into uh, the material that we're going to stain um, so really to be honest for the use uh, that we're going to put this to this is the final step in normal photo v carve at this point you would go on to save the tool path out uh, according to the machine tool that you were going to run it on but because we're going to do a final uh, sort of layout in another in another piece of software in our original piece of software I don't need to go on to this step I can go up here to file save as and I can simply save this out uh, as a photo vcarve file a .pvc file which is the photo vcarve document type so we've got here baby boy six inches by six inches roughly uh, so we can save that out uh, and that really is all we need to do for the purposes of our um, demonstration here uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to open a new image so I'm going to load in this time the picture of the girl and then we're broadly going to run through the same steps so she's also had all the background removed uh, using a paint tool different color but it doesn't matter as long as the color doesn't appear in your image make sure you choose a bold color that's not likely to appear in your image otherwise you will make bits of your image transparent at the same time so in this case we've used a bold blue I can make that color transparent as well select it and it becomes transparent set the material size again I'm going to set this to be six inches and this is a, this it, photograph is exactly square so um, it's automatically set the height to the same amount set the origin bottom left as well again the thickness is not massively important but I'll keep it consistent Z0 at the top units are correct so we can just apply that set the cutting parameters and again I'm going to use my 60 degree conical tool here with a uh, a quarter inch radius coming down to a point if we look at that tool you can see it comes down to uh, pretty much uh, a point at the tip um, and now with the same parameter set I can calculate the second tool path for the little girl and again I just need to save the file I don't need to go on to the next page and create the tool path we're not going to create the tool path directly from photo vcarve um, so I can save this now as the baby girl 6 by 6 inch photo vcarve file and at this point now we're finished with photo vcarve and I can close it down okay so now we've created and saved our photo vcarve files the final step is to assemble all the bits so we want our original plaque background and we want to now import those photo vcarve files and position them on the plaque uh, now to show this more clearly I'm going to just tile my view so um, I'm going to use the option here to tile the windows uh, top and bottom so I have the 2D view in the top and the 3D plaque in the bottom so we can see what's going on and then I'm going to use this import vectors from file option here uh, and what we can see is that this brings in all of the different file types uh, that we support for importing into the 2D view uh, and amongst those is the photo vcar file format which I can highlight uh, exclusively by selecting this option so we only look at photo vcar files which are the .pvc files and we can see the two files that we just created so if I double click the baby boy he immediately is imported both as a photograph that we can see in the 2d view and also crucially the toolpath associated with that photo uh, in the 3d view
And as I, so I can select him, he becomes highlighted with one click. If I click him again, so we've double clicked on him, we get the option to transform this, to move it around. And then I can simply drag it in the 2D view to the position I want in my design uh, using the conventional um, tools that you're probably familiar with. So I can drag him up here, position him on the right hand side under his name, Thomas, and then uh, you can see that the toolpath has moved uh, accordingly. So this is effectively allowing you to position the toolpath uh, in your existing design. I'm going to come back now and do the same thing for the baby girl and bring her up here into position. So I double click and drag to position. And finally, just to demonstrate the point that you can use many of the same drawing um, or layout options uh, as you're familiar with with other 2D elements in the in the software, we can also uh, use some of those for these photo vcar files. So in this case I think from a layout point of view it would be a better composition if um, the girl and boy were facing one another. So I'm going to just flip Thomas over so that he's facing his baby sister here. Uh, so with the Thomas's preview selected in the 2D view, I can come back to the mirror selected objects here in the transform object section. And we can just choose flip horizontally. And as I flip, you'll notice down here that we flipped the toolpath as well as the image. If I flip that again, you can see that happening. So that's a nicer composition. Let's just position his sister correctly as well. And once the composition uh, is, is exactly as we want it, uh, we're ready to just nip across now to the toolpaths tab and we can simulate uh, and preview exactly what the final plaque is going to look like. When I go across to the toolpaths tab, uh, we can see that two new toolpaths have automatically been added to our toolpath list, which have come from the photo vcar files. So we can select baby boy, for example, and preview that toolpath. And that has now added the engraving here to the bottom. I'm just going to uh, expand this 3D view to fill the whole space here and I can do that by double clicking on the uh, bar at the top here. So I double click that, it fills the whole view for me. So we can see Thomas's picture now and then I'm going to select the baby girl and preview that toolpath too. So we can see now our final finished plaque. Now all of the toolpaths are now all together, they are in the correct positions, so all that remains really having simulated or previewed the result to see that uh, everything is as we expect, I can now save out the toolpaths. And we can do the usual uh, system of saving toolpaths uh, that you're familiar with, uh, pick your post processor appropriate for your machine tool and save the toolpaths out. Um, the only thing really worth emphasising here is that the origin for each of these toolpaths will be um, as set by the, the model that you've imported to. So this toolpath will be cut from an origin um, of the bottom left hand corner uh, as uh, it is for all of the uh, toolpaths that make up the design. And that's it.